Hello everyone, Pesky Girl here. Today we want to talk about dysmenorrhea. What is the important point to remember in history taking, how to do physical examination and what physical examination is important, and how we should manage primary and secondary dysmenorrhea. In a history taking, the most important thing is to diagnose primary versus secondary causes. So in primary cases, usually the menarche has just started or it can happen after even two years. And uh, uh, we don't expect to be uh, any pathology. There is a, the causes is usually because of uh, too much prostaglandin production. And as you might expect, uh, and say it can work perfectly for this kind of uh, dysmenorrhea. However, in secondary cases, usually the patient has a period of uh, pain-free menses. Um, uh, most um, prevalent diagnosis could be adenomyosis, endometriosis, ovary cysts, and fibroids. Even um, contraception such as IUD can um, cause this. So as you might guess, we need a lot of investigation for this type. So uh, we start our investigation, uh, our history taking with SOC rates. If you know what it stands for, uh, S is for sight. So we usually um, expect to see pain in lower abdomen and lower back. Uh, the onset, uh, as I mentioned, depends on being primary and secondary. Uh, it can happen like one year or with a menarche. And uh, with each cycle, Usually, if it's primary, it happens uh, one day before menses, and it's usually less than 72 hours. Uh, with uh, secondary cases, it can take longer to resolve. Characteristic is usually crampy pain. Radiation can happen to the back, as I mentioned. And associated symptom is really important. We can ask about fever, discharge, um, menorrhagia, um, postcoital bleeding, um, they are important associated symptoms. So about time, time course, uh, usually in primary, we uh, with each menses, the pain decreases, so it gets better. But in secondary, it gets worse. Exacerbating and relieving factor are also important. Uh, because like NSAID can usually have um, help with the pain and severity because some form of the uh, dysmenorrhea can really be uh, disabling. So we can ask about uh, the pain from zero to 10 uh, and the effect on the patient life if they can um, go to school, go to work or if they have to take some time off. In past medical history, we ask for any possibility of STI, any history of sexually transmitted infection before, uh, or any surgery, or any other problem that the patient has, any um, uh, parity, uh, if the patient has ever been pregnant, any C-section. Um, and um, it's really important to screen for sexual abuse in this kind of patient. So you can start by asking questions like, um, you know, in most patients that come with this symptom, I ask about um, if they have ever been hurt or uh, touched in a way that they didn't want. Uh, has this uh, ever happened to you? Or has anyone ever forced you to have sex? Or have you ever had a sexual experience that you didn't want? And um, for contraception, as I mentioned, because IUD is important, and uh, family history of endometriosis, for example, or cancer, and um, if the patient is smoking, and diet also is important in social history. An examination and general appearance. Uh, if the patient is in pain now, we can assess for degree of pain and discomfort in patient. Always remember to offer painkiller or um, asking what way you can make the patient uncomfortable uh, if they're currently in pain. 
and uh, vital sign blood pressure is important temperature if you're thinking about infection is also important um, the most important part uh, focus of our examination is abdominal examination and pelvic examination just remember in a patient who have not had any uh, sexual contact like teenagers uh, we do not do pelvic examination also in those who deny to be uh, examined uh, so we explain what we're going to do we provide privacy for our patient to get undressed and uh, we offer chaperone always uh, the position is usually a modified lithotomy position, so heel brought back to bottom and knee fall out to the side. You can ask if the patient has um, uh, done any STI screening or any uh, cervical screening. So uh, if the patient is ready, you can do this examination at the same time and you can do the test at the same time. Uh, just remember, uh, ask the patient to empty the bladder so the patient would be more comfortable during the exam. For primary dysmenorrhea, we start with non-pharmacological management. We could offer something like heat pad or hot water bottle on the lower back and abdomen, a gentle massage, avoiding caffeine, smoking and alcohol can be helpful. Uh, maintaining a good sleep hygiene and relaxation technique and also participating in regular exercise can really be helpful in decreasing the pain. However, if the pain is severe and is interfering with the life, we can offer pharmacological treatment. It could be NSAID. We start NSAID 48 hours before ex expected onset of menstruation or at the onset of pain, we continue them for three to four days of the cycle. Uh, we can consider adding paracetamol if NSAID is insufficient or is not tolerated. Um, so uh, we should also consider adding PPI in women who are at risk of gastrointestinal bleeding. Uh, we can start with ibuprofen as an example. If the patient is younger than 12, we start with low dose, 200 milligrams, six to eight hours a day uh, to a maximum of 800 per day. But if the patient is older than 12 years, we can start with double the dose, like 400 milligram initially, then 200 to 400 every four to six hours. Maximum dose will be 1200 milligram per day. Other examples are methanamic acid and naproxen. Combined oral contraception uh, can be used as a cyclic method or extended cycle or continuous fashion. A monophasic pill with ethanol estradiol of 30 to 35 microgram are favored. And uh, continuous or extended use uh, um, is really uh, can be relieving symptom. There is no increase in serious side effect and um, no problem. However, some women may experience uh, breakthrough bleeding with 120 days of uh, consecutive pill use. So if there are three consecutive days of breakthrough bleeding, it is recommended that a four to seven days hormone free interval occur. So we expect a withdrawal bleed to occur at this time. And uh, about secondary, this was about primary dysmenorrhea. Secondary dysmenorrhea, we usually um, it depends on the cause. So as I mentioned earlier, the causes could be endometriosis, sexually transmitted infection such as PID, for example, and um, uterine fibrinoid and ovarian cyst. So depending on the cause and on the result of investigation, we can approach these cases.